Hi everyone, it's Jerry here at the Croswell. Oh my gosh, with my friend Kyrie, who's in the other room. We are here to say hello. It's been way too long since we have been together, but today we've got some exciting news to share and some really fun things coming up at the Croswell. Yes, so you may be familiar with some of the things that we've been doing to kind of pivot and make sure that we're connecting with everyone. Um, but as things start to slowly open up in Michigan and we're able to have folks inside at uh, limited capacities and things, um, we're excited to share some things with you about Farvers. And one of those is a new program called Meet Me at Farvers. Um, and it's got some fun drink specials coming along with it and conversations with folks that you know and love. It's so fun. Of course, we know so many times you're here at the Croswell to see a show or say hello to someone. And it's always the question, what are you doing after? Meet Me at Farvers is going to be the opportunity to, for you to join us either virtually or um, in person if you are comfortable doing that and sharing each month we're gonna have four special drinks in Farber's. Of course, we have our full bar, but these four drinks are gonna be some crazy, delicious concoctions put together by Eric Parker. And two of those will be actually shared on video with some Croswell alums and friends. I'm so excited for you to hear the lineup that's coming up, a couple of videos for February. Um, and so you can watch those videos and feel like you are at Farber's, even if you're not quite ready to be inside. Totally. And there's an, another fun little addition since we're able to still um, sell our cocktails to go. You can come in and pick one of those up and take it home with you. Or we have the Dara program where you can walk downtown and look in the shops and things. So that's happening. But there's a little uh, incentive that comes along with it. If you each specialty cocktail that you taste you get an enter into a little an entry into a little drawing uh, in which we'll pull at the end of the month and parker has a special little package put together for you so after curie and i are finished you're going to see the first video of eric parker and one of our very special friends can we say who it is curie yeah i think yeah I think, yeah it's tobin oh oh my <laughs> gosh you are going to have so much fun watching these two guys just remember the Croswell, celebrate a lovely cocktail, and just have a whole lot of fun. I really hope you enjoy it and that it entices you to consider trying one of our specials for the month and that you get it to go or just as soon as we can be open. We're thinking it will be first Friday um, that you will want to come in and say hello. Gosh, we miss you so much. And we can't wait for you to see these videos. It's true. All right, Jerry, what are you what are you doing right now? Uh, I'm getting ready to go meet me in Farmers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, well, we hope to meet you in Farmers soon. We do. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you soon. Well, hi, Toby. How are you hey. doing? I'm great. How about yourself? Not bad, not bad. Thanks for joining us today. I, I, I made you a little sign. I love that. I love that. Please, please send it my way. I'll hang it on my apartment door. Today, we are going to make a drink uh, called the Cranberry Flame. Everybody watching, it is kind of amazing. I don't love sweet drinks, and there's a lot of sugar in this one, oddly, but it tastes amazing, and it is not overly sweet. Not at all, not at all. But it does have it does have a couple interesting things in it. Um, I know you and I talked about this, and, and you in New York and I here in Michigan, we made our house-made cranberry simple syrup, which is so easy to make, you know. A little vestige from Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right? A cup of uh, sugar, a cup of water, and eight ounces of uh, fresh and frozen cranberries simmered for about 10 minutes, and then you get this wonderful stuff. For those who actually make their own uh, cranberries uh, at, at those holidays, I love it, but I seem to be the pariah in the family who likes to have theirs out of a can. But if you make it, you're basically, the syrup is, is the early stages of that, where you're basically following the same recipe, cooking the same berries, but taking them off before they pop. Nice. You know, we could refrigerate that in, in the can form. Like, you know, <laughs> Slide your drink out onto a plate. Well, <laughs> so gross. Anyway. <laughs> But this drink is not gross, decidedly not gross. 
Indeed. Um, it also has some healthy elements for you. It has orange juice and lemon juice and lime juice. So there's you'll, never, you'll never get scurvy when you drink this? Never get scurvy. So you, you've got a lot of vitamin C in this. Delicious. It's a healthy cocktail. Vitamin C. Well, let's get started. So we're going to make this drink together. We have our two drink cocktail shaker. All right. So we have some whiskey. Um, you've got some Jim Beam over there. I've got some Jack Daniels old number seven. Fireball would be good in this too, I suppose, if you're really into the cinnamon aspect of it. Yeah, folks, do not use an overly expensive uh, uh, bourbon or whiskey. You do not have, I mean, you could if you want, of course. They always taste great, but there's so much going on in this drink. You don't need to waste something with a lot of nuance. Absolutely, my friend. So about four ounces, go in your shaker. Oh, look at that. Measuring with this jigger, so wonderful. I might add just a little bit more. Okay, I'll never tell. Jim Beam is from 1795 is when it got its charter. And it was it used to be called Old uh, Old Tub Bourbon. Who knew? Oh, okay. Jim Beam bought the company and decided, okay, we've got to add our other stuff to it. Oh, yes, we do, don't we? Yes. Cranberry simple syrup. And very simple syrup. All right. Orange juice. Orange juice. <laughs> Lemon juice. Lemon juice. Lime juice. Lime juice. Let's go over here. All right. Let's assemble our components. Also, you, please use uh, fresh fruit if you can. It's always, it tastes better. That, that's also for if you're going to make a margarita, it makes all the difference in the world if you use the real thing. Shaky, shaky. I need a paint shaker. Oh, oh look at this. This looks so good. Oh, wait. So before we do the flaming orange zest, as far as garnishes go, a cinnamon stick and each one. Now, I know you have prepared cranberries on a toothpick, on a skewer. I'm just going to toss a couple of loose ones in the drink. Yep. A couple right. cinnamon sticks in there. Tell me about this flaming orange zest. <laughs> so you want to get yourself a, a nice fresh orange. Um, and basically, uh, two, two trains of thought on this. Uh, uh, Eric, I think you like to cut discs mm -hmm. of the skin. Uh, I like strips more. Uh, either works fine, but basically what you want to do is with a paring knife or with a peeler, uh, you want to cut into the skin layer uh, down to the pith and make yourself a nice swath of it or disc of it. In my case, I'm making uh, a piece that's essentially three and a half inches long or so. Then get yourself some matches, uh, wood matches uh, ideally. Um, you don't want to use butane, you don't want to use a lighter or anything like that because you will have that flavor lingering. I think so too. So the whole idea of this is to express the uh, orange oil into the drink, over and into the drink, correct? That's right, yeah. It just gives it a nice uh, flavor. Uh, you pick up on it, your nose picks up on it, um, even before you drink the drink. So it just adds a nice flavor. You can do this incidentally with, uh, with lemon, uh, the flavor of lemon as well. There we go. And then when we're there, you basically want to just give a squeeze. Yep. And a squeeze over your glass. It sure does look impressive too. And then with that oil, uh, just rub it around the edge of the glass. It's also, it'll be sitting on the ice, the rocks in your glass as well. Mm -hmm. And then just drop your peel on in. Cheers, my friend. You, too. you to Farber's and to the Croswell. Oh, this is so good. That is a fantastic drink. Again, not too sweet. It's just got a whole lot going into it, and it's um, perfect for the winter. The cranberry flame. <laughs> I hesitate to say this, but you are my cranberry flame. Oh, well, we're, we're <laughs> here. We are uh, going on uh, uh, on uh, February and Valentine's Day, so I'll always be your cranberry flame. Oh. <laughs> You heard it here, friends. All right. Hey, so interesting, considering that we have now announced that we are Cranberry Flames, that I haven't spoken to you in months. So what has the pandemic been like for you in New York? How is How are you and how, are, how is art uh, surviving? 
We're, we're, we're doing it. We're living the dream. Um, speaking for myself, of course, and, and the rest of the city and, and those specifically in the arts. Uh, I live on 45th Street, uh, literally about a block and a half from the center of Times Square. And when I walk out my building and turn to the left, you just see uh, all of these uh, uh, signs for the uh, Broadway theaters and they're all dark. You, know, you walk by at nighttime and they're just all, you know, the, the, the theaters are all shuttered, which is very sad, but theater and uh, theater folk are, are certainly residual, um, are uh, uh, resilient folks and uh, we'll come back stronger than ever. And uh, even though we've been shut down on our end, I gotta say it's mighty impressive uh, what the Croswell has been doing uh, on its end uh, over the summer when uh, things were shut down, the, the comprehensive programming, the, the music, uh, uh, the play that took place, all, all these wonderful things that have been happening. Uh, it, we've been lacking it on the East Coast pretty dramatically. And so the fact that uh, the innovation and the creative thought going into uh, new thinking and how can we stay alive uh, during this time, uh, that's just so exciting to hear uh, from the East Coast. And, uh, and while you guys are, are moving, um, uh, I look forward to the day when uh, New York uh, reopens. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jerry and Kyrie and Sarah and Eric, I mean, it's a, it's a small but mighty staff up there, and they've been working so hard at trying to come up with varied and interesting and successful programming. And this year, I know Jerry's got a lot of stuff up her sleeve, uh, some more outdoor concerts, mm -hmm. and go smaller and then increasingly larger uh, theatrical productions until in a, in a variety of locations until hopefully, um, hopefully we're back. Absolutely. You know, in the winter time, and I know she'll have some announcements on that stuff. You know, coming up shortly via email and whatnot. But um, yeah, it's been uh, it sure has been hard. It's certainly in the smaller cities too. I mean, if the Croswell suffers, Farber suffers a bit. You know, so we we've also been trying to find find ways to you know keep open with carry out and you know curbside service and all sorts of things that other restaurants and other you know bars do. But um, yeah, it's been tough. So hopefully we've got. Uh, you know, we've got a, a happier future to look forward to here. Well, it's nice to have such individualized cocktails being made. Um, you know, I know you have a, a list coming up of, of interesting things uh, that'll be turned out. So uh, uh, the thought that you can just swing on by and, and pick something up is, is pretty wonderful. Um, so. You know, aside from theater in New York, the restaurant industry has really been hit hard here as well. And so, you know, outdoor eating in lean twos in uh, 20 degree weather, uh, is a little challenging on our end, so right. uh, um, so so yeah. Here's to, here's to your innovation and what you're you're turning out. You know? oh, yeah, thank you, my friend. So we've known each other a long time. I, I this is like thirty years, I think. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? For intern summer. That's crazy. Yep. The first 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 year at the Croswell. Uh, yeah. What was that? Nineteen ninety eight was it? I believe. Oh, I'm nineteen ninety eight. I wish no. Nineteen ninety one was our, our summer. <laughs> But I know, I think you had done, oh, yeah. did yeah. you do yeah. before that? Did you yeah, I, I think my first summer was 1980, I'm sorry, 1989, I believe. Okay. Well, I was there that, that year too, boy. I'm old, I can't remember anything anymore. Right. I'm dyslexic with my numbers. I just remember all the fun we used to have with the overnights, you know, laying out drops and, and uh, face painting them so you could, you could come in and work absolute magic, especially with those king drops. I, I still marvel at how beautiful those things were. Well, thanks, thanks. And where you're standing right now is, uh, what, you know, the old uh, heritage room. I believe there was a microwave essentially where you were. And so at three o'clock in the morning, we'd get our microwave uh, dinners and have our lunch. Right. And uh, head up on the roof in the summer and uh, just sit on the, the top and just uh, overlook uh, Adrian. And I, uh, eat, I eat. I love a hot pot started then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still have to get off those things. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and I, I think our name is also written backstage. We all the interns that summer like wrote our little group name, uh, our initials on the uh, the yeah. side of the proscenium. Right. And they're there to this day. Uh, and I think the oldest name in that building is in chalk up in the rafters, and it's it goes back to the 1800s, which yeah, is pretty absolutely. cool. Absolutely, all the workmen, all the you know, vaudevillians who came in. Mm -hmm. stop. Oh, it's crazy. Well, I won't take too much more of your time. We'll take care, you. Eric. Uh, best to you, uh, to the Croswell, to Farvers. Uh, stay safe and well, and here's to when we can toast in person. You too. Okay. Clear. Clear. <laughs>